Hello, welcome to the video on an introduction to absolute value. This is our third example set, example set C. And what we're going to do in this particular video is we're going to check to see if a value is a solution to an equation. Okay, now all these equations that we're going to be looking at involve the absolute value function. So that's where the absolute value part of our exercise comes in. But um, in order to check if a value is a solution to an equation, let's just kind of review a real basic equation here for a second. So if I had like say x plus 3 equals 7, and I ask you to check if the value x equals 2 is a solution to this equation, okay, what would you do? Okay, well basically what you're going to do is take this value here, if x is equal to 2, you're going to replace 2 for that x. Okay, and we're going to see if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, if this equation balances. So you can see here that we have 2 plus 3, that's 5, and we know that 5 is not equal to 7. Therefore, x equals 2 is not a solution to this equation. Okay, so that's the way you check to see if a value is a solution to any equation in mathematics. But um, if you understand that, then you should be able to do these problems without too much difficulty. Actually, I think they're pretty easy. But uh, like any problem in math, it's easy to make a mistake if, um, you know, if you rush and you don't show all your steps. So let's go ahead and start with our first one. So we want to check to see if x equals negative 3 is a solution to this equation. So we're going to plug in negative 3 here for that x. And then we're going to simplify. And then we'll take a look and see if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So we're going to have negative 2 times absolute value of negative 3. Okay, so that's, we have to see if that's going to be equal to positive 6. So now we have to figure out what the absolute value of negative 3 is. And of course, I know all of you know that the absolute value of negative 3 is a positive 3. So we have negative 2 times a positive 3. And is that equal to a positive 6? So negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Okay, and negative 6 does not equal to a positive 6. Okay, they're close, but, you know... There's a difference in sign, so they have to be exactly the same. So in this case, x equals negative 3 produce this result. So x equals negative 3 is not a solution because the left-hand side does not equal the right-hand side. Okay, so that's basically it. Pretty straightforward. And by the way, too, if you haven't had a chance to do these problems, I think now might be a good time to maybe pause the video and you know see if you can do these before I do them. But uh, let's go ahead and continue on. So we want to check to see if x equals 5 is a solution to this equation. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and plug in 5 for all these x's. So I'm going to get 3 times absolute value of 5 minus the absolute value of 5. And we want to see if that's going to be equal to 2 times 5. Okay, just a quick um, reminder. Um, recall, when you're plugging in values, okay, especially an expression like 2 times x, uh, when you're evaluating a particular value, you always want to do that uh, using parentheses, like I did here, two parentheses, five. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this. So we have three times the absolute value of five. Let's take care of that first. The absolute value of five is five, so this is going to be three times five, minus the absolute value of five is simply five. Okay. And we have to see if that's going to be equal to two times five or ten. Okay, so 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 5, is that equal to 10? Yes, it is. So we have 10 is equal to 10, and that's a true statement. Therefore, x equals 5 is a solution to this equation. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff here. All right, let's go on and take a look at our next problem. So here we were given x equals negative 6, and here's our equation. So we're going to go ahead and plug in that negative 6 right there. And we'll just continue to simplify this equation. We'll take a look to see if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So the absolute value negative 6 over negative 6, is that equal to a positive 6? All right, so let's go ahead and do this now. Absolute value of negative 6 is a positive 6. So we're going to get 6 over negative 6. We want to see if that's going to be equal to 6. Okay, so a positive 6 divided by negative 6 is negative 1. Okay, and negative 1 does not equal a positive 6. Okay, so that's this didn't turn out to be a situation where the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So therefore, x equals negative 6 is not a solution 
to this equation. Okay. So now let's go ahead and finish up finish up with this last problem. So we want to check to see if x equals negative 1 is a solution to these uh, to this equation. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and just kind of give you like a little pop quiz here. Okay. So x equals negative 1. What is x squared equal to? In other words, evaluate x squared when x is equal to negative 1. Actually, write a negative 1 here. Okay. So how do you do that? So I'm going to give you two choices, okay? And you tell me which one is the right answer. Would it be this, negative 1 squared, or would it be negative 1 squared like this, okay? So x is equal to negative 1, what is x squared? Or evaluate x squared given x is equal to negative 1, okay? Well, hopefully you picked this one, okay? This is a very common mistake. It goes back to where we were talking to there a moment ago. When you're plugging in a value, when you're evaluating, especially in powers, a particular value, you always want to use parentheses, okay? Because these answers, parentheses negative 1 squared and negative 1 squared written this way, are two totally different values. Uh, parentheses negative 1 squared is this, negative 1 times negative 1. That's what that means. Okay, now negative times a negative is a positive, so this is positive 1. However, this means take 1 and square it and then find the opposite. So 1 squared, a positive 1 squared is 1, and an opposite is negative 1. Okay? So when you see this expression, that's equal to a negative 1. And when you see this expression here, that's equal to a positive 1. So it's really easy to make a mistake, okay, if you don't know how to evaluate a numeric expression. So this is a common mistake that students make. That's why I kind of took the time to kind of review it. Let's go ahead and do this problem now. So we have absolute value of negative 1 squared. So that's going to be negative 1 squared. We want to see if that's going to be equal to the absolute value of negative 1 cubed. Okay. So the absolute value of negative 1 squared, we just saw that negative 1 squared written like this, is going to be a positive 1. Okay. So we have the absolute value of 1. And we want to see if that's equal to the absolute value of negative 1 cubed. And that means negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a negative is going to be negative. So all these 1s, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, that's going to be equal to negative 1. All right, so negative 1 cubed is the same thing as negative 1. So the absolute value of 1 is 1, and the absolute value of negative 1 is also 1. Okay, so 1 equals 1. Therefore, that's a true statement. So we have x equals negative 1 as being a solution to this equation. Okay, so hopefully I didn't confuse you because that was a lot of 1s in there. But um, remember in mathematics, you know, it's often the, de the little details that get us in trouble. Okay, so for example, if you said, oh, x equals negative 1, and I told you to evaluate that expression, and you did this, okay, well, hopefully you won't make that mistake again. Okay, common mistakes, and that's the thing in, um, in math is to just, you know, if you made a mistake, figure out what it is, learn from it, and just kind of tuck it away like, hey, well, you, know, you, know, you know, whatever I did last time didn't work. This is the way I'm supposed to, you know, be doing it in the future. Okay, so just don't repeat the same mistakes. So if you're having problems, go back and review. Okay, but it's really important to know how to work with these absolute value um, functions. They come up in equations. They come up in inequalities, etc. Okay, so keep working hard. We'll see you soon.